This video is going to show you how we comb goats, cashmere goats. And the first thing we're starting out with is to show you our setup, which is the goat stand. That's the wooden uh, platform we're going to put the goat on when we're ready to comb. You can see an overturned white five gallon bucket with a towel on top of it. That's our seat. It's also handy for holding supplies when you're not combing. There is a toolbox, tote bag type toolbox, on top of the goat stand that has our tools in it, which I'll show you in a minute. And there's two cans of feed in front of the goat stand, and uh, the green bucket on the goat stand is the bucket that we're going to feed them with while we're combing them. It keeps them happy to eat some feed. We have in one of our buckets is oats, and the other one is sweet feed. And I like to combine them to give the goats a little treat. All right, so now I'll show you the tools that we have that we use. This is a slicker brush. It's a dog brush. Uh, I don't use this side of it, but that's how this one came. The slicker side is great for cleaning the goat off right at the beginning to get the debris that's on the top off of it. This is a, a rake style dog brush, and this is the one I use the most for combing, which I'll show you in a minute. I have two sets of each of those brushes in my bag because I like to have two people work on a goat um, at a time because it cuts the amount of time it takes for combing in half. Uh, grocery bags to put the cashmere in when we get it off of the goat. Gloves. I typically wear a glove on my right hand and leave my left hand ungloved because I am right handed and that's what works best for me. Bags to put samples of your cashmere in to send off to the lab to be analyzed. This is much too large a sample because this isn't really a sample to send off to a lab. This is some dirty cashmere that we're going to use um, as an example when we do tours. This is actually the size of the sample that we send off to the lab and you'll notice if you can see it on the video that I marked it with the goat ear tag number one and I put 2012 on it for the year that we collected the cashmere. Okay, another pair of gloves. Two more pairs of gloves. Some more cashmere samples. Collars and uh, at least one leash, preferably two, in your bag. Um, I also keep dewormer uh, both for internal, we use Cydectin and Silence for external parasites. We don't have problems with external parasites this year, but last year we did because we had bought some coats from goats that were infected uh, when we bought them and we didn't know it. So we got that on hand as well if we need it. This is blood stop powder in case we trim their hooves too short, just like a dog. It'll cut their quick and they'll bleed like mad. I have not found it to be particularly effective, but, you know, I tried it and now I rarely use it because it's not effective. Uh, and then I have these little laundry detergent cups in here because I pour the dewormer, the cydectin, out into them when I'm going to use it. On the outside of my little bag, I have pruning shears. These are, these are actually hoof trimmers, and they work great, but they were getting dull, so I went to Lowe's and bought a nice big pair of pruning shears. These work really great for adult goats with larger hooves. They're a little bit big for the smaller goats. Uh, I also have a pair of scissors for trimming out mats, a sharpie for marking the bag. These are my Ziploc bags for putting the samples in. On this end, I have some, <clears throat> some of these latex gloves in case I want to use them, but I rarely do because they make your hands all sweaty. sweaty. I don't use them for combing. Uh, and in this pocket, I have my Famacha card, which is used to look on the inside of their eyelids and you compare it to this color scale to figure out if the goats are anemic or not. And if they are anemic, it's a good indication that they've got worms and they need to be dewormed. And of course, I keep the color side pointed towards the bag so it doesn't get faded in the sun. And then just uh, another Sharpie marker. So this bag style is pretty handy for this job because everything's just right there where you can reach it very quickly when you need it. And to empty out and turn over to dump out the hay and debris that gets in it, which you, of course, cannot avoid in this job. So I have an assistant here who's going to help me get the goat on the stand. And by the way, this stand, the plans for this stand are on the fiasco, dot, I think it's fiasco.com. It's Fiasco Farms. They're a goat farm. They're a dairy goat farm and they have this uh, plans for this goat stand on their website and it's the best one that I have found. And this is actually our second one. Our first one got washed away in a flood and we did not modify it a bit. 
when we bought the second one because it just works wonderfully. Uh, the other essential to have is water because you will get thirsty. I find it takes an hour and a half to two hours to comb a goat. Tim, will you bring her up here? And if two people are doing it at the same time, it cuts that time in half. On my grocery bags, I write the date that I combed the goat. I also write any notes on it about the fleece or if their hooves were particularly long um, because I trim hooves when I comb them. And, uh, and of course I write the name or the number of the goat on the bag. Come on, sugar. This is sugar. Come on, baby. There we go. The seasoned goats jump up here without a hitch because they know they're going to get some good food while they're on the goat stand. I also use these cups from fast food restaurants as scoops in my, in my feed bucket. Okay. I'm going to move the camera in some so you can get a better view of what I'm actually doing while I'm combing the goat. There we go. And I'm going to write her name on the bag. I already got the date on it. Sugar. And when I'm done, I'll mark things like if it's a particularly nice fleece, I'll mark that on it because, you know, that might be a fleece that I want to enter into a competition. Or if she was matted because I was late in getting her combed, and actually you can see some mats right here on her. I'll indicate that because then I'll want to comb her earlier next year. I didn't write stuff on the bag the first couple years I did this, and I found it to be extremely helpful to do that because you can't remember everything, and when I write it down on a piece of paper, invariably I'll lose the piece of paper. When it's written right there on the bag with their fleece, when I process their fleeces, uh, I don't process them in, into yarn here, but when I go through them to record them in my record-keeping software, I've got all the information right there on the bag. All right, so I'm going to go over her first with a slicker brush. That helps to get the debris off the surface. You get a little bit of cashmere out with it too, but not too much. I throw this bit away because it has a lot of dirt in it. And you'll see there's a fair amount of cashmere in there but it is pretty dirty, so I'm just going to pitch that. I just throw it on the ground. You could have a trash bag handy if you want uh, to throw it in. Just pull those mats out. We don't want that to go in with our fleeces. And they're just pulling out real easily. If they were in there really tough, that's where I would use the scissors and cut them out because, you know, we don't want to traumatize the goat. Say hi to the folks, sugar. All right, so she's pretty well cleaned off. A little bit of dirt. You're never going to get all the dirt out. You don't have to worry about it. If you send it off to a mill, they'll do a good job of getting the dirt out. We use Still River Mill in Connecticut, and they do an excellent job of getting the vegetative matter, as we call it, out of their furs. And you can see, just with that little bit, I got a pretty big clump of cashmere there. I'm going to put that in the bag. I guess the one thing I would probably add to this stand is a little hook up here in the front to, to hook the bag onto. It should just take a, a minute to do. We just haven't done that yet. As you can see, I'm taking short strokes, and I'm not pulling it out every time. I'm taking short strokes, and you can see it's gathering up right here. And then I pull down one long stroke, and it pulls all that loose stuff out. You comb in the direction of the hair. There we go. See? Bunch of short strokes. One long stroke pulls the clump of cashmere out. And she's standing real nice for us. Some goats dance around like they're trying to cut off their leg. We have one little one, a one-year-old that we combed earlier that just laid down. We ended up taking her out of the headstock and just held her to comb her because she, uh, she was just pretty much scared stiff. <clears throat> there we go. All right, and we just keep doing that until we get all the cashmere out. You can feel 
even when it looks sometimes like you've gotten all the cashmere out, you can go over with your hand and you can feel pockets of cashmere because it feels much fluffier. Um, so you can see I've combed over this spot several times now. And look at that, I'm still getting a good amount of cashmere out. You just have to keep combing and combing. Now on some goats, the slicker brush helps a lot too. And I switch back and forth between the slicker and this rake style. But on most of the goats, I do what I just did with her. I go over the top with the slicker to get the worst of the debris off. And then I use the slicker to, to get the rest of the cashmere out. And that was our UPS driver that just drove by. So, um, I read in a book one time that when you're harvesting cashmere, you need to have a clean room. I mean, like clean, clean, like sterile, hospital clean is pretty much what they were suggesting. Now, I've never heard of anybody doing that in practice. That sounds great in theory, but the fact of the matter is these are farm animals. They live in the pasture and they're dirty, so they're going to have dirt on them. I'm not sure why you would need a super clean room to do this in. We do it out in the pasture or in the barn. Normally, I'd be sitting in the shade in the barn to comb her, but so that you could see here on the video better, we came out in the sun. Uh, it's best to come on days that aren't too windy because the cashmere will just blow away. The first few goats I combed the very first year we had them, uh, I about chased down every tuff, every little tuft that flew off in the wind, and it didn't take me long to realize I was wasting a lot of energy doing that. You just can't worry about it too much. If you lose a tuft or two, you lose a tuft or two. Don't stress yourself out over it. Like I said, it takes an hour and a half to two hours to comb each goat. Um, and with a partner, of course, you cut that time in half because you do both sides at the same time, which I strongly recommend. It's less stressful for the goat to be on the stand 45 minutes as opposed to an hour and a half. Alrighty, so you've gotten the idea of combing. You can see how this is really flattened out here, but this is still really uh, fluffy right in the back there. Of course, because there's still a lot of cashmere in here, whereas this is pretty much combed out. The cashmere on the neck tends to be very short and also on the legs. Sometimes if you're in a hurry, you just comb their sides and because uh, that's where the best cashmere is. But I usually like to comb their necks and their legs too, just to basically just to groom them. Uh, because if you leave it in there, it tends to get matted up until the next year when you comb them again. And then it's just kind of yucky. The cashmere on their back ridge oftentimes gets sunburnt. It also tends to be very dirty because of the hay falling on top of them while they're eating or just whatever, debris falling out of the trees it makes it very dirty. So I'm going to take this bag down and like I said, when I've got them on the stand, I also like to trim their hooves and I check their eyelids to see if they need to be dewormed. So far all of our goats have had nice pink eyelids this year. But we'll just check here. Let me adjust the camera just a little bit. Get your ear out of the way, baby. And we just lift it. We just pull down, pull down on the up on the lower eyelid, and she is really nice and pink. Her goats are doing great this year with regard to parasites. Don't you want to eat? She must be a little bit nervous because she's not eating. All right, and then for their hooves, see if I can adjust this camera a little bit. There we go. We lift up on their leg, we turn the hoof upside down, and she's got some overgrowth there. Let me turn this off. Now, like I said earlier, if you trim too short, they bleed, um, and they'll fuss at you. But sometimes you can tell that if they flinch when you start to squeeze, it's a little bit, you might be cutting a little bit short, maybe, but maybe not but I like to tend to just take a little bit off at a time. It's okay. You're doing good. Yes, you are. Yeah, she's got actually pretty good hooves. They're not hardly overgrown at all. And I mark that on my bag when I'm, you know, with the fleece in it because I like to have goats that don't require a lot of maintenance and ones that have slow growing hooves require a lot less maintenance than those with fast growing hooves because you have to trim those fast growing hooves a lot more often. Oh, come on, girl. Come on.
Yep, yep, I know. I know, you're nervous and you don't want to have this done. Cashmere is braided according to its length and its fiber diameter and also according to how curly it is. Uh, it's got to be under 19 microns, some say 18 and a half, in order to be considered cashmere, and that's the diameter of the fiber. And a micron is one one thousandth of a millimeter, so it is extremely small. It's hard to tell by the naked eye whether uh, how thick the cashmere is, but there are some people who have developed a really good eye and can estimate it very closely. It's good to send it off to a lab to be analyzed because then you get very objective results from it. It's also good to submit your fleeces to cashmere goat competitions and if you can, take your goats to competitions to be evaluated by the judges. It gives you a lot of information. It's a very educational experience. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, surely just contact us and we're happy to answer any kind of questions we can about cashmere goods. Thank you for watching to the end.